Here's another video talking about an electric vehicle technology that is common and growing outside of the US, but we don't have it here. Let's talk about battery swapping. It continues to grow in popularity in China, and NEO has brought it now to Europe as well. And it's more than just NEO doing this. There are other companies involved for passenger vehicles and for commercial trucks. Like in my other videos, I'm gonna give you three reasons why this could be a trend that does catch on in the United States, followed by three reasons why it probably won't. And I encourage you to share your thoughts because at the end, I'm gonna give you the correct answer. Well, I'm gonna give you my answer anyway. As for battery swapping, I'm not gonna go into much detail. I think you understand. It's kind of like this, except for an electric vehicle. One more thing, in 2007, an Israeli-based company called Better Place imagined a world of advanced new battery electric vehicles that would swap their batteries. They put in 21 stations into operation before declaring bankruptcy in 2013. Reason number one why battery swapping should take off in America is that it's growing in China. China is the largest car market in the world and the largest market for battery electrics. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. NEO is the leader in battery swapping. It's core to their brand. And to be clear, you can still charge a NEO like other EVs. The battery swap is there for situations where you're in a rush and there happens to be a swap station nearby. They now have 2,500 battery swap stations in China and 54 in Europe. They've performed over 50 million battery swaps to date, and currently they're averaging about 70,000 swaps a day in China. And, you know, my dumb analysis says those are big numbers, so people are definitely using this. Not only is it popular with NEO vehicles, but it's expanding to other companies and other use cases. It's hard to keep up, but here are some of the recent developments. CATL is the world's largest manufacturer of EV batteries. Some vehicles in the U.S. already use their batteries. They created the Evo Go brand, not to be confused with EVgo. It's a battery swapping station, and they've partnered with a couple of Chinese automakers, mostly those who make inexpensive taxis for ride hailing. Speaking of ride hailing, they also announced an agreement with Didi to deploy battery swapping for its service in China. GAC launched a premium brand called Hyper that can swap batteries like Neo. Maybe they team up with somebody or maybe they stick it out on their own. Geely has too many brands and they've offered battery swapping on two of them. And they've now signed an agreement with Neo to align with their technical standards. So you can say that Geely is on team Neo now. BAIC, they're developing an EV platform that will battery swap. FAW said they're developing a battery with the second largest manufacturer, BYD's FinDreams, and it will be battery swap capable. Battery swapping is expanding to other use cases as well. NEO allows you to upgrade your battery in your EV. So let's say you bought the 75 kilowatt hour model, and it's not ideal for your current driving plan. So you upgrade to the 100 kilowatt hour for a little more money and a little more range. You want more? I'll give you more. I'll give you big trucks who are also putting battery swapping to use in an interesting way. You can see some examples here. Rather than dropping the pack down from the bottom, they lift it off the back of the truck. It's pretty clever. And yes, yes, Cybertruck, Plans to offer a range extender battery like this. You can even pre-order it when you reserve your truck now that there's no waiting list for Cybertrucks anymore. Now, I've yet to mention why battery swapping is taking off, what the customer benefit is. It's fast. There are a handful of EVs out there today that are capable of charging their battery from 10 to 80% in like 15 minutes. That requires the right charging equipment, and battery preconditioning, so ideal situations. Other EVs more widely available, you should expect about 25 minutes, and there are plenty of slower charging cars than that. With the latest 4.0 battery swap station, 
Neo claims it takes 144 seconds to install another battery that's gonna be close to 100% charged. Now, where the clock starts and stops can make a big difference, but fine, even if it takes like four minutes, that's super fast and convenient as cameras and LiDAR sensors guide your car into the battery swap station. Because if you rely on the meat-based drivers to position the EV correctly, it's just gonna slow things down. Battery swapping sounds awesome. So why aren't all EV makers doing this? For one, it's not cheap. Let's look at Neo's latest 4.0 battery swap station. Each station has 23 battery packs. Let's assume each pack costs $10,000 each. It could be more depending on the size and the chemistry. The equipment that can automatically unbolt, detach, and replace the battery is really amazing, but definitely not cheap. I've seen varying estimates for each power swap station between a quarter million and a half million dollars each. It wasn't clear if the high estimate includes the batteries while the lower estimate doesn't. Maintenance for the intricate equipment is also going to be significant. On the positive side, one station can swap 480 batteries a day. So you can say it takes the place of about five standalone EV chargers. The power swap station does need to be able to recharge the return batteries to make them ready for the next customer. So it also needs that charging capability. A different way to look at this, Tesla has about one supercharger connector for every 85 vehicles they've sold over the years. Neo currently has one power swap station for every 200 vehicles they've sold in total. And that makes sense since battery swapping has better throughput, it's faster. And those are just how they're currently set up today. But that means that each EV that Neo sells has a battery plus about 0.1 additional batteries waiting at a power swap station somewhere. One battery in the field for every 10 Neos sold. In summary, building a network of power swap stations with some EV chargers by their side is expensive. Building a fast charger network like Tesla has is also expensive. And by far the cheapest thing to do is nothing. But often that's a crappy experience and automakers are starting to learn that it's not gonna work out in the long term. An EV that can battery swap costs more to manufacture. This is clear, especially in light of a design trend called cell to body or cell to chassis. Most EVs today package all their batteries into a pack that's called cell to pack. That pack then gets mounted into the vehicle. That's the traditional design, and it's similar to a battery swap design. Cell to body is a new design that integrates the batteries into the body structure of the EV. Tesla is given credit for doing this first, but BYD, Xpeng, Leap Motor, Xiaomi, they do this too, and many others have announced plans for this cell to body design. On the positive side, automakers estimate that up to 30% of the pack costs can be eliminated. Now that's the non-battery costs. So again, let's assume a $10,000 battery pack. It could be, let's say, $1,000 of pack structure and hardware. So that's a 30% reduction or a $300 savings. All of these are just estimates for discussion purposes. There's also a claimed weight savings of up to 10% for better packaging efficiency. The downside, serviceability. If a battery goes bad in a Neo, you just swap it out. EVs that use cell to body are much, much more difficult to work on. But unfortunately, automakers have shown that they're willing to sacrifice serviceability for cost reductions. It takes a lot for competitive companies to come together and agree on a common solution. Auto companies have come together to commonize things like, like light bulbs. There are only a dozen or so designs to choose from, but there are plenty of examples where automakers stubbornly do their own thing. Pretty much every automaker has their own design for a turbocharged two liter four cylinder. There's been almost no effort to share engines across automakers. For battery swapping to work at scale across multiple OEMs, they're gonna have to agree on common battery packs and submodules. It may have to be the battery manufacturers like LG, Samsung, Panasonic, who have to force this commonality if this ever works. All this standardization and complexity reduction 
is not impossible, but it's difficult and kind of unprecedented for car companies to do a good job of it. Truck manufacturers, maybe they can pull this off. In the US, if you can get Volvo trucks, Daimler trucks, and Packard to agree on a common battery module, it would instantly become the standard in the US. So maybe commercial trucks will find success with battery swapping. So there you have it. Three reasons for and against battery swapping taking off in the US. Feel free to share your thoughts below in the comments. As for me, I think battery swapping will take off in the US, but only for specific use cases. For ride hailing taxis, for example, yes. For robo taxis, yes. Eventually when robo taxis do happen, you wanna keep them running. So battery swapping for those applications makes sense. For commercial trucks that have longer routes, that also makes sense. I would love to tell you that battery swapping will take off in the US, but I think automakers will prefer to squeeze out cost using cell to body design versus making them able to swap. If the US automakers want to do battery swapping, they should all be working with Ample. Thus far, the California-based company is working with only a couple of car and truck manufacturers, nothing in production yet, but definitely someone to pay attention to, and I hope they attract additional partners. Companies in China have a huge advantage in this area. They're learning from hundreds and thousands of battery swaps being performed by customers each day. And I hope you learned a thing or two from this video. If so, give it a like, and thanks for watching.